Uh, you may be seated. The rabbi will now begin the service. We'll start with the ancient tradition of Kriya. As was just mentioned, our Jewish funeral service begins with Kriya, or tearing the black ribbon. It's a custom that dates back to two biblical moments. First, when Jacob saw what he thought was the blood of Joseph on his coat of many colors, our Bible says that he tore his clothes. And then many years later, when King David learned that his eldest son, Avshalom, had been killed, in his grief, he fell to the floor and also tore his clothes. So this expression of tearing has been part of our Jewish funeral service now for over 3,000 years. And the external tearing has come to symbolize the broken fabric and the broken hearts in our lives. It's the measure of a woman. And not how did she die, but how did she live? And not what did she gain, but what did she give? These are the units to measure the worth of a woman as a woman, regardless of her birth. Not what was her station, but had she a heart? And how did she play her God-given part? Was she ever ready with a word of good cheer to bring back a smile or banish a tear? Now, what was her shrine or what was her creed? But had she befriended those really in need? And now, what did the sketch in the newspaper say? But how many were sorry when she passed away? She is gone. And you can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind and be empty and turn your back, or you could do what she would want, smile, Open your eyes, love, and go on. At times like this, words fail us, and so we turn to our psalms. And in your pamphlet, if you can, please join me in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. <clears throat> yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eshet Chayel Miyimsa, this is Proverbs 31. A woman of valor, who can find? She is more precious than fine pearls. She perceives that her labor is rewarding, her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need and she extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom, and the law of kindness is on her lips. 
Her family rise up and they bless her and they sing her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. You are a light inside my soul, inside my heart, so full of hope. Your light shines in my memory. I honor you as a part of me. I still remember all the things about your smile, the way you always made me feel. Those little things that we did together in our time, in me your energy is real. You are a light inside my soul, inside my heart, so full of hope. Your light shines in my memory. I honor you as a part of me. Having had you in my life is such a gift to me. I know you didn't want to leave, but my life goes on and I change and I grow and I learn and I know that's what you'd want from me. You are a light inside my soul, inside my heart, so full of hope. Your light shines in my memory. I honor you as a part of me. A life well lived cannot be diminished by death. The beauty, the guidance, and the inspiration it gave us will shine on as brightly as ever. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal, but life leaves a memory no one can steal. Those we love remain part of us. Our loved ones leave this world, but never our hearts. Dorothy is a part of who you are, of how you see the world, of how you live and give and those priceless gifts are yours forever. There's a beautiful Hasidic lesson that tells us that we mourn in three ways. We mourn in tears, we mourn in silence, and we mourn in song. We are mourning in tears. We are certainly mourning in the silence of our hearts but we are commemorating the, and also celebrating the wonderful song that was the life of Dorothy B. Davis. In describing the passing of our first matriarch, Sarah, our Bible says that Sarah lived to be 127 years old. And what the Bible doesn't say is that Sarah died at 127, but that Sarah lived to be 127 underscoring that what is most important in life is how we live and not how we die. Dorothy lived a wonderful life of love for her beloved husband Alvin of 74 years, a life of love for her children, Lauren, Deborah, and her husband Michael, a life of love for her granddaughter, Melanie, and her husband Jeffrey, a life of love for her sister-in-law, Isla, and her late husband, Edwin, Irving, and his wife, Arlene, and Donna. A life of love for her extended family and her many friends. The family shared with me that Dorothy was the Jewish force in the family. She was an excellent cook, and particularly on the Jewish holidays, and was especially known for her matzo ball soup. Everyone was always welcome in her home. Well, that was easy for me to see because I quickly discovered that Dorothy Davis had the right recipe for life. And the main ingredient in that recipe was the love she had for her family. Our tradition teaches us that when we pass on, we leave behind only two things. And they are two Hebrew words that not only sound alike, but they come from the same root. One is Yerusha, and the other is Morisha. Now, Yerusha are your material assets. They're your bank accounts, or your real estate holdings, or your stocks and bonds. But Morisha is the essence of who you are, are the characteristics about yourself that you leave behind for family and friends who love you and who will miss you. I don't know, nor do I care to know, what Dorothy's Yerusha was, but I can tell you what her Morisha was. It was an unconditional love for her family. It was a reaching out and caring for others, and it was an incredible zest for life. You know, in the very first words of the Bible, it says, let there be light, and there was light. 
But it wasn't until day four that God creates the sun and the moon. So if God creates the sun and the moon on day four, what was this light that God was talking about in the very first sentences? So I believe that light was the light of God. And since the world wasn't complete, God put that light into each and every one of us. And when we lead a good life, and when we care for others, that light shines forth and makes this world better. Every single person here knew that Dorothy had that light. And when it shone forth and hit you, it inspired you to do better and to be better. You know, on the drive up, a song came over the radio that touched me very deeply for this service today. It was a 1960s hit song that was written by Burt Backrack and Hal David and sung by Dionne Warwick. For how can I forget you when there is always something there to remind me? Each of you will always have something there to remind you of Dorothy. For as the song concludes, for how can I forget you when there is always something there to remind me? I was born to love you and I will never be free because you'll always be a part of me. We're familiar, most of us, with that great scene in the Bible where Moses is standing by the burning bush and the burning bush is on fire but not consumed. Your beloved Dorothy was just the opposite. She consumed you with her fire, with her passion, with her friendship, and with her love. I was very, very moved by all the things the family shared with me about Dorothy. So I'd like to share with you a very personal and a very special poem whose message I know Dorothy would have embraced. It's entitled, If I Knew. If I knew it would be the last time that I'd see you fall asleep, I would tuck you in more tightly, and I pray the Lord your soul to keep. If I knew it would be the last time that I'd see you walk out the door, I'd give you a hug and a kiss, and I'd call you back for one more. If I knew it would be the last time that I'd hear your voice lifted up in praise, I would videotape each action and word so I could play them back day after day. If I knew it would be the last time I would be there to share your day, I would not say you'll have so many more that I can let just this one slip away. I would not think that there's always tomorrow to make up for an oversight and that we always get a second chance to make everything just right. So just in case today is all I get, I'd like to say how much I love you. And I hope that we never forget that tomorrow is not promised to anyone, young or old alike. And today may be the last chance that you get to hold your loved one tight. So if you're waiting for tomorrow, why not do it today? For if tomorrow never comes, you'll surely regret the day that you didn't take the extra time for a smile, a hug, or a kiss. And you were too busy to grant someone what turned out to be their one last wish. So hold your loved ones close today and whisper in their ear and tell them how much you love them and that you'll always hold them dear. Take time to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, or it's okay. And if tomorrow never comes, you'll have no regrets about today. Yes, Dorothy's song may be over, but the melody of her life and her love will always continue on. Her passing cannot diminish the important ways that she touched your lives, and your grief cannot take away the happiness that you shared. In your memories of her, may you find comfort. In your family and your friends, may you find love. And in your hearts, may you find the strength to help you through this very difficult time. So may the memory of Dorothy V. Davis always be a blessing to us. May it inspire us to do better and to be better. And in her honor, may God grant you comfort and peace during this very difficult time. It's now my honor to, to call upon daughters Lauren and Deborah, who have some thoughts to share with us. Good 
And the first um, thing I would like to share with you is a message from my husband, Michael. Dear family, though I have but few words to share, by no means does this diminish my great love and admiration for mom. In the 43 years of our relationship, I cannot recall a time when I felt anything but her unconditional love and support. Mom trusted me implicitly from the start. As long as her daughter Deb was with me, Mom felt Deb was safe. I'll never forget one time, fairly early in our relationship, when I was lounging in the family room downstairs watching TV alone. Mom came out of the laundry room and started up the stairs and then turned to me out of the blue and said, Michael, I don't think we could love you anymore if you were our own. I was so flattered I was at a loss for words. When I first was approached to call Deb's parents, mom and dad, I feared that this would be difficult. Before I knew it, this became second nature. As anyone that ever knew mom can attest, she always put others before herself. You could not wish for a stronger pillar to support friends and family. Love, Michael. Secondly, I'd like to share some thoughts from her daughters. Our mom was a truly special woman whose top priority in life was her family. She was an amazing strength of character and always led by example. She taught us to try our best at whatever task was at hand and to always, always finish what we started. My parents provided an unconditional love so deep for us that it gave us the confidence and courage to navigate life's ups and downs. Our mom had a truly generous spirit that touched everyone in this room. She gave freely of her time to many causes and organizations and through mothers and brownies and Girl Scouts and anything that she could do for her kids. She was the most creative person I ever knew. Her gifts for singing and cooking and sewing and centerpieces and invitations, embroidery were a few of her talents. There wasn't anything she couldn't do. She didn't put her mind to it. My mom may have been small in stature, but to us, she was 10 feet tall. We love her. She will live in our hearts forever. And now Melody will share with us some very special musical pieces, one of which is Ose Shalom, May the good Lord who makes peace in thy heavens grant peace and comfort to all of us as we remember Dorothy. Amen. <laughs>
Wow. Melanie, Deborah, Lauren, as I listen to your words and your music, I remember the words of Father Michael Judge. Father Judge was a Catholic priest who was the chaplain to the New York City Fire Department and perished in 9-11, saving lives. And before he died, he wrote to his friends, hang on to your memories, hang on to your moments, and hang on to each other. Hang on to your memories of mom. Hang on to the wonderful moments that all of you shared with her. But you are a wonderful family. And the most important gift you can give to her memory is to hang on to each other. I would ask everyone to please rise. El mole rachamim shochem bam romim hametze menucha nechona tachat kanfei ashachina b'malot kedoshim utoharim kezoar harakia masirim et nishmat Dorothy B Davis shalachali olamo El mole rachamim o exalted compassionate God grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure to the soul of Dorothy B Davis who has gone unto her eternal home. O merciful one, we ask that she find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of life. May she rest in peace. And as one united family, let us all say, Amen. And you may be seated. This concludes our service here at the chapel. Interment will follow immediately at the family's plot at West Lawn Cemetery. Select individuals have been asked on behalf of the family to escort Dorothy's casket to the cemetery. Only those will be going in procession. Memorial contributions in memory of Dorothy Davis should be made to the Jewish National Fund, JNF, help plant a tree. That information, as well as other information, is available on our website. At this time, I'm going to ask everybody to please rise. The following individuals are going to step forward to serve as pallbearers. Brian, Stephen, Jeff, Irving, Michael, and Melanie. Please come forward at this time as we escort the casket, the rabbi, and the family from the chapel. <laughs> 